Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for Dell Technologies World 2019. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante. Day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We've got two sets called the Cube Canon. We've got the Canon of content. Interviews all day long, out at night at the analyst briefings, um, meetups, receptions. We're talking to all the executives at Dell Technologies, VMware, and across the industry. Uh, Stu, Dave, today is product announcements on the keynotes. Yesterday was the Grand Vision with Michael Dell, and the big reveal on the, on the Microsoft partnership with Satya Nutella. Surprise visit on stage, uh, unveiling new Azure VMware integrations uh, with Dell Technologies. Dell announces the Dell Cloud, which is a little bit of VirtuStream but they're trying to position this cloud, I guess it's a cloud if you want to call it, single cloud of glass, a day, single pane of glass, with a variety of other things, unified workspaces, a variety of things. This is Dell trying to be a supplier end to end. This is the pitch from Dell Technologies, and we'll be talking to Michael Dell, also Pat Gelsinger, CEO of VMware. Um, Dave, were you impressed? Are you shocked? Were you surprised? with yesterday's big news, and as the products start coming online here, what's your analysis? Well, yesterday, yesterday, John, was all about the big strategic vision, Michael Dell laying out tech for good, and then the linchpin of Dell strategy, which of course is VMware for cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, kind of VMware everywhere. I was surprised that Satya Nadella flew down from Seattle and was here on stage in person, didn't come in from the big screen, so I thought that was pretty impressive. You had the three power players up on stage. Today, of course, it was all about the products. Both Dell and EMC have always been very practical in terms of their engineering studio used to work there. Their R&D is a lot of D. It's sort of incremental product improvements to keep the customers happy, to keep ahead of the competition, to keep the life cycle going. You had like 10 announcements today. I can go through them real quick, uh, you know, if you want. But they range from, you know, new laptops, you're talking about new, branding on servers, new storage devices. Um, you, had, you had Power Protect, which is their new uh, rebranded uh, backup and data protection and data managed portfolio, an area where Dell EMC has been behind. So, lots of announcements. Another you know, kind of mega launch tradition. And um, again, a lot of incremental but important tactical improvements. Yeah, Dave, Dave last year, uh, what we heard from Jeff Clark is they're looking to simplify that portfolio. Uh, you know, back in the EMC days, it was, oh my gosh, look at the breadth of this. Every category, they had two or three offerings, and the, you know, the stated goal is to simplify that, and that means most categories are going to get one product. It's interesting. Uh, you talk about networking just got rebranded with that power branding. Uh, I kind of said there's that marketing behind the, the, if you know what that product is because it's the power brand, they put it out there. Uh, so, you know, PowerMax, uh, you know, has been there as their, their tier storage. You know, they had, they had a good update to Unity, to Unity XT. Doesn't have a power name yet, so you know, maybe there's still uh, some uh, dry powder left uh, you know, in, in the product portfolio there. But they're making progress going through this because you know, these things don't happen overnight. It's great to spin up the clouds, but you know, the storage world, customers, they trust, they have the code, they've tested it out. So going to new generations, making that change, you know, does take time, but we're still, you're seeing that progress. The, the tail end of that integration between Dell and EMC on the product side. Stu, what's your analysis of the product so far? I mean, again, like Dave said, it's a slew of announcements. What's resonating, what's popping out, what's boiling up to the surface? Yeah, so, so look, you know, the area that, that I spent so much time on, John, that hyper-converged infrastructure, if you look at a lot of the pieces, underneath it all, it's VxRail. One of the things we've had a little bit of a challenge squinting through is, oh wait, there's this managed service stack and it's VxRail underneath. Oh wait, I've taken the appliance and I put VCF, oh, that's VxRail, and then I've got this other, it's like I see three or four solutions, and I'm like, is it all just VxRail with like a VMware stack on top of it? But it's, how do I package it? What applications live on it? How is it consumed, managed service, OpEx, CapEx, so they've got that a little bit of complexity when VxRail itself is you know, just dirt simple and really there. So they're making progress on the cloud piece. You know, Dell is the leader in hyperconverged. I'll point out, you, know, you don't hear anybody talking about Nutanix here, but Dell still has a partnership on the, the XC core. They're going to sell a lot of Dell servers into Nutanix environments. Uh, you know, so you know, I expect you know, you, you'll still, at the Nutanix show, John, you're going to be at that next week. They're still going to talk about Dell. I'm sure you'll talk to Deeraj. Yes, they made a partnership 
partnership with HP, but that does not kill the relationship uh, with, with uh, Nutanix. Just like, you know, Microsoft, heck, I'm going to see Satya Nadella on stage at Red Hat Summit next week. And you're like, oh, well, VMware and Red Hat, Red Hat's here. Red Hat's a Dell-ready partner. If you want to put OpenShift on top of their stack, they can do that. So hardware and software, you know, everybody's got their pieces, everybody competes a lot, but they partner across the board. Uh, you know, IBM Global Services is here. There's so many companies here. Dell's a broad, broad company, deep partnerships. Um, the, the, the question I have is, you know, Pat Gelsinger was just on stage saying that this, you know, SDDC will be the building block for the future. I said, kudos to them. They've got it on AWS, they've got it announced with Azure, they, we announced it with Google, but that is not necessarily the end state. It's VMware is a piece of the puzzle. I don't know if VMware will be the leader in multi-cloud management. vCenter was the leader in virtualization management, so how much of that will there? Or do I get on Amazon and then start moving some stuff over? Do I get to Azure and start modernizing my environment so that I don't need to pay VMware and I don't need virtualization? VMware and Dell are going to containerize everything, so in the future, you know, are they containerware? You know, that, that's the competition kind of pokes at that. They are VMware at their core, VMware central to the strategy, and there's, there's still some work as to go, but they're, they're, they're making some good progress. I want to get your thoughts, guys, on the role VMware is playing here at the show. Uh, normally they're here, usually they're here, but this year it seems to be much more smoother integration of talking points, messaging, product integrations. Uh, the show's got a good beat to it, um, pretty packed. But the role of VMware, Dave, is to, what's your reaction and thoughts? We've seen the, them dance many times, obviously, the VMware, Dave, you pointed out yesterday, a big part of the valuation of Dell Technologies. But the, what's your observation on the presence of VMware here at Dell Technologies World? I mean, I've said many times that this company, and I said this about EMC, it's kind of a boring company without VMware. You put VMware in the mix, of some becomes very strategic and very interesting from a lot of standpoints, certainly from a financial standpoint. Remember, the Class V transaction that took Dell public was the result of an $11 billion dividend because of VMware. They took VMware's cash and they said, okay, we're going to give $9 billion to the shareholders. Without VMware, that wouldn't have happened. As well, the multi-cloud strategy, the underpinning of that multi-cloud strategy is VMware. And what strikes me, John and Stu, is that the cultural change, you had Dell, you had EMC, they said, oh yeah, the, com com the companies are com compatible. But they're different companies. They maybe had shared kind of goals and values, but they had different cultures. And really, in a very short time frame, Michael Dell and his team have put these two companies together, and they have aligned in a big way. I mean, they are basically saying, VMware and Dell, boom, that's how we're going to market. And you know, Pat Wilson, Pat's coming on later today, but, and I'm sure he'll say, hey, we love NetApp, we love HPE, we love IBM, but yep. it's clear what the preferred partnership yes. is. Dave, when the acquisition happened, there was talk of synergies, and you were, oh, where are they going to cut and everything? If I look around here, they've got the seven logos of the primary companies. It's, you know, Dell, Dell EMC, Pivotal, RSA, SecureWorks, VirtuStream, and VMware. They're one company. Michael Dell will go on calls for any of them. You know, friends of mine at Pivotal, you talk to Michael quite a bit. You know, he's out there. You know, we talked about it yesterday. Dell and VMware are closer and tighter aligned than EMC and VMware ever were. Now, on the one hand, EMC kept them separate because the growth of virtualization required that. Today, in this cloud environment, it's a different world and it's matured. So VMware's sure, there's still work on HP and IBM and all this other stuff, but Dell leads that John, move and you John, said, Dave. John, you're big on culture. This is a founder culture. What's, what's your take on what Michael Dell has accomplished and how does it, how does it you know, stand or compare with sort of other great you know, cultural transformations that you've seen? Well, I think HPE is a great example of a culture that split. Meg Whitman's on charge there, we know what happened there. And I think they're hurting, I think they're losing talent um, and they're not winning in categories across the board like Dell is. I think Michael Dell, the founder-led um, approach that he's had, because he told us years ago, if you guys remember, on, here on the record also privately, that you know, I'm going to take this off the table with EMC, we're going to do all these things, we're going to execute. So he brought his execution mojo and, and uh, ethos of Dell, and become Dell Technologies, as Stu pointed out, portfolio of multiple companies under one umbrella, 
and he brought the execution discipline. And this was a theme, Dave, last night at the analyst reception, as I was talking to other analysts and talking to some of the execs, both from VMware and Dell Technologies, that the execution performance across the board, both on product integration, which is a weak spot, as you know, um, is getting better. The business performance discipline, we're going to have the CFO on here to talk more about it. They're executing. Howard Elias, who's going to be on this afternoon, he called this three years ago when we talked about the integration, that they saw synergies, they saw opportunities, and they were going to unpack those. They stayed relentless on that. So I think this is a great example of keeping the founders around for all the VC-backed companies. You're thinking about getting rid of founders. Never let a founder leave a company. They bring the vision, they bring also um, some um, you know, guts and, and, and grit, and they bring a perspective, and you can put great talent and team around that attract and retain great executives like Michael's done, and he's poaching HPE, other companies that pulling talent in, because they're executing, they pay well, it's a great place to work, according to the statistics. So again, this is all because of the founder, and if the founder's not around, you have all the fiefdoms and the politics kick in, and then it becomes kind of sideways. So that's kind of what I see, other companies that don't have founders around, and HP lost their founders, obviously, and then the culture kind of went a little bit sideways. So, so they're trying to get back in the game, same, going back to their roots. We'll see how they do. Um, we don't do that show anymore, and again, you know, we don't have a lot of visibility into what HP's doing, but we do know, Dave, that they do not have a lot of the pieces on the, on the board that Dell does. So if you want to have an end-to-end -end operating model, and you're missing key value activities of a end-to-end -end value chain, that's going to be hard to automate, it's going to be hard to be performant, it's going to be hard to be successful. So I think Dell's showing the playbook of how to be horizontally scalable operationally and offer you know, yeah. perspectives and yeah, data-driven specialism in any industry and any vertical. Yeah, and, and Dave, if I can, just on the cultural piece, because it's really interesting. Well, we talked about you know, EMC, East Coast, hard driving versus you know, VMware, software, Silicon Valley company. While they're working together, a lot of it, you know, I talked to the VMware people and they're like, well, it's great, the Dell Force is just selling our stuff. It's not like I'm not having storage shoved down my throat or we have to you know, have our arms twisted. It's you know, the product portfolio that they're selling, the vSAN, NSX, the management software suite, and those pieces, you know, things like SD-WAN, there's some you know, good synergies there. So the product portfolio is a nice fit that just jointly go in a market, that they just really line up well together. And you know, Dell's a very different cultural beast than EMC was. Well again, staying on culture for a moment, what I've discussed with, with some of the folks that I know out of Hopkinton, the narrative early on was, oh, Dell's ruining you know, e EMC, tearing it apart, and so forth. When you talk to people today, they said, you know what, it was painful. Dell came in and said, okay, you're going to be accountable, uh, really an accountability culture, but now that they've come out the other side, the, the narrative is, it was the right thing to do. Jeff Clark came in and sort of forced this alignment. It's like, no question about it. People, this is a guy who, you know, his calendar's set for the year. People know where he's going to be, what meet he's going to have, what's expected, and they're prepared. And it seems to be taking hold. I mean, a $90 billion company that's growing at 14% in revenues, and profitable revenues, that's quite astounding when you think about it. And I think it's a big result of the speed at which Dell has brought in its operating model to the broader EMC and transformed itself. It's quite amazing. Awesome show, guys. We got clips out there on uh, the hashtag Dell Tech World on Twitter. We got a lot of videos. We got two sets here, three days of wall to wall coverage. Final word on this intro for day two, guys. Thoughts on the show? It's uh, not a boring show, it's a lot of activities, a lot of things. They got an Alienware, eSports gaming studio, which I think is totally badass. Um, a lot of kind of cool things here. It's not the glitz and glam that uh, we, we've seen in other EMC worlds before or Dell worlds but it's meat and potatoes, and it's, it's got a spring to its step here. I feel a, it's not a, it feels good, I, that's my takeaway. Well, the big, big theme is cloud, uh, hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. John Rose said, as we were leaving the room today, uh, that we were early with that multi-cloud. Thanks, thanks to everybody else in the industry for hopping on board. The, the reality is, the first time I heard the, the sort of hybrid cloud was called private cloud. Chuck, Chuck Hollis wrote a blog back in the mid to late 2000s. Now, I will make a, uh, an observation, uh, and the customers that I talk to. Multi-cloud is not thus far, has not thus far been a deliberate strategy. In my opinion, it's been the outcropping of multi-vendor, shadow IT, lines of business. And I think the corner office is saying, hold on, we need to rein this in, 
We need to have a better understanding of what our cloud strategy is, build a platform that is hybrid and sure, multi-cloud to build our digital transformation. We need IT to basically help us build this out to make sure we comply with the corporate edicts. And that's what's happening, this is early days. There's a long way to go. Yeah, Dave, as you know, I sat right down the hallway from Chuck Hollis when he wrote that piece, and I, went, I called up Chuck, I'm like, hey Chuck, this sure sounds like my next generation virtual data center stuff that I joined the CTO office to work on. He's like, yeah, yeah, new marketing branding. And I wrote a piece exactly what you said, Dave, on wikibon.com. Hybrid and multi-cloud, we're a bunch of pieces. You know, it, it's, it's not a cohesive strategy, the management's not there, we're starting to see maturation. Some of the point products, you know, developed really fast. When we talk about VMware Cloud on AWS, that happened really fast. I heard, if you stop by the VMware booth here at the show, they're showing outposts, and I said, is there a diagram? They said, no, no, I've got customers in production running this. I'm like, hold on, I need to hear about this, outposts in production, but when that strategy, as you said, hybrid and multi-cloud, we're starting to get there, starting to pull it together. David Floyer wrote a phenomenal piece about hybrid cloud taxonomy. We're spending a lot of time on the research side. Really, what does the industry need to do? How should customers think about all of the layers, you know, data and networking and all of these components to help make not just a bunch of pieces, but actually drive innovation and help be better than the sum of its parts. Well, an ironic follow-up on that post, the Chuck Hollis post was around, called the private cloud, and it was all about homogeneity. Right. And now, multi-cloud is everything but homogeneous. Outpost, however, is same hardware, same software, same control plane, same data plane. So, interesting juxtaposition. We'll see, Amazon Outpost. Guys, go to siliconangle.com, wikibon.com, great hybrid cloud, multi-cloud analysis, coverage, and news. And some of the headlines hitting the net here, Dell Technology makes VMware the linchpin of hybrid cloud, data centers of service, end user strategies from ZDNet, eWeek, Dell makes major hybrid cloud push. Obviously, great analysis, guys. Right on the number. Day two, CUBE coverage here in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman. We've got two sets, Rebecca Knight, Lisa Martin, and more. Stay tuned for more coverage. Day two, after this short break.